Let's see what's happening in the world of Instagram. Oh, okay, whoa, since when is she in Dubai? <gasps> Look how stunning the streets of Spain are. Bora Bora, must be nice. All these people are out experiencing the world, seeing beautiful places, taking amazing photos. Why am I here, sitting on the couch like a goddamn potato? Oh yeah, that's right. I can't really afford to travel, and I have no time. I'm working a double shift next month. It's just not possible. These people must just be extremely lucky. Well, maybe one day. We tell ourselves we don't have enough resources, enough money, enough time, enough courage. Well, this scenario seems familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, I thought so. I'm making this video to show you that it's not impossible for this to be you. Hello human beings, it's Cecily and it's been a while since I sat down in front of the camera and filmed a video for you guys. Today I'm going to be doing a video about how I'm able to travel on quite a low amount of money. So I'm going to be giving you guys all my tips, all my resources that I normally use, and all the websites and apps that I use on my phone in order to book flights, book hostels. Before we get on into the resources and my tips, I just want to say a couple of disclaimers. You should be comfortable traveling solo. I know a lot of people don't prefer to travel solo because it's better or people prefer to see a new country or city with a friend or family member or a significant other but what I've learned over the past two years where I've taken trips by myself is that you can't really wait along for the people that are saying that they're gonna travel with you and it kind of just keeps getting put off so if you do see that cheap price ticket and you're tempted to buy it I say just go for it. I would say spontaneity is your best friend here. Just go for it and don't question it, don't second guess it. Just go, go, go and don't let anybody hold you back. Just you got this. Second disclaimer that I wanna mention is please ask yourself why you're traveling in the first place. If you're expecting luxury and crazy hotels and really really fancy experiences this video is not for you because i personally enjoy traveling because i'm able to see a new city and meet new kind of people and not necessarily have to do anything that's really super pricey so if that's the experience you're looking for then probably the tips i'm going to be giving you guys in this video are not the best thirdly and lastly is be willing to make sacrifices what I mean by this is with cheap travel, you're going to have to put up with a lot of things that requires patience. Instead of doing a direct flight, you might have to do a crazy long layover in order to pay 30 euros compared to 160 euros. And like I said before, this requires a lot of patience, but if you're really determined and dedicated to go on that trip, I don't think that you should let this stand in your way at all. So the number one thing that limits us in our mindsets is the fact that we don't have money to travel. But let's just think about this scenario, all right? Imagine you're saving $5 a day instead of getting that coffee that you pick up through the drive-thru or that you go to the cafe for, instead of picking up a sandwich for lunch, anything that you spend $5 on in a day, try to save that $5 instead of spending it daily. And could you just imagine this? If you add it all up, after 30 days a month, you're gonna have $150. After a year, you're gonna have $1,800. That is enough, that is more than enough money. And if you really want it, like I said, you're gonna be able to save up. Maybe you're saying, well, I don't make enough money to actually save. Then you can try to find a side job or try to do some freelancing online. Everybody has a skill that they can put out there and there's so many resources nowadays such as Fiverr.com that allows you to use your skills and make a profit out of them. So if you really, really do want to put savings and funds 
to the side in order to make this trip a reality, you're gonna find your way. All right, so we're gonna get into the resources that I use. We're gonna firstly talk about flights. So I normally use an application on my phone called a sky scanner. This app is incredible and I learned about it from the YouTube channel called A Damon and Joe. If you are interested in travel, cheap travel and different like alternative travel experiences, you've probably heard of them before. There is an option on the app in order to find the cheapest tickets. They do this thing where you don't necessarily have to choose the destination you're going to. You can click anywhere so you keep your options open and it tells you what destination is the cheapest for you to go to depending on where you are departing from and this is my number one top tip that i highly highly recommend anybody can download this app on their phone it is free another feature that you can use on skyscanner is the notification feature so if there's a specific trip that you really really have been wanting to go on for example if i'm in new york and i've been wanting to go visit san francisco i can put in the specific dates that i am planning to go to san francisco for and I can turn on these notifications that are sent to me daily in order to tell me if the prices have lowered or increased. And this way, I will be sure that I will be getting the cheapest option. Another app that I use on my phone in order to find flights is called Hopper. It's basically the same thing as Skyscanner. It puts all the different price options side by side so you know for sure that you're getting the best, best price. Um, highly recommend it. I use Skyscanner more often, but Hopper is also very good. And then my last resources for looking for flights is just budget airlines in general. So if you're located in Europe, you're going to find that Ryanair is typically very, very cheap. Oh, also I wanted to mention for flights, I made a video about it not long ago, but remember always to pack lightly if you can always try to bring just a big backpacking backpack if you know what i mean i'll insert a clip and if you don't typically like wearing backpacks for trips you just bring a small small carry-on do not give the airlines any reason to charge you extra and remember to always check the policy so they don't surprise you at the airport Alrighty, moving on to buses. Buses are, again, more common in Europe because of the fact that the EU consists of so many countries that are just right next to each other. It is easy to just take a weekend trip to another country. It is very convenient to do so, so I highly recommend it if you are traveling in Europe. I would recommend the site's Flixbus. There's an app called Omeo, and Eurolines also is a cheap bus your website. Lastly, I'm going to be speaking about Blah Blah Car. Blah Blah Car is available in France. I'm not sure if they're available everywhere in Europe or even in the US. I'm not sure. Blah Blah Car is basically a concept that is based around carpooling. There is an app for it. Let's say that someone posts on the app that they're going to Marseille, which is a city in the south of France, and they're coming, they're departing from Paris. So as a traveler, I would see this post on the app, and if I'm interested in going to Marseille, he's gonna set a price for each person that wants to get into the car. So typically you'd have three extra spots in the car or four if there's someone in the passenger seat. And fun fact, my friend met her ex-boyfriend on the app, so just saying. Moving on to cheap accommodation. I've talked about this previously in other videos. Number one go-to in terms of accommodation. So you can use the app called Hostel World, which I've also talked about previously on my channel. I have a video that I posted talking about my experiences in different hostels and what you should know before staying in one. So check that out. The second option for accommodation is couch surfing. I've only done three couch surfing experiences, but all of them have been incredible. It's a reliable way. I know a lot of people seem like sketched out about it or they think that it's kind of suspicious, but I've made a video about me staying with someone on couch surfing and it was my first experience. I vlogged all of it and I think that was probably my best experience out of all three of them. So if you want to see that, check that out. On the app, you basically see a list of hosts in the city that you're going to go visit and you can see all these reviews that other people that have stayed with them have left 
if that makes sense. It's kind of confusing. Staying with a stranger can kind of seem like a weird concept when you first think about it, but the world is actually a really small place and once you stay with these other people, despite the fact that they may speak a different language than you and they may live in a different country than you, you actually get to see how small the world is and how connected you are as humans despite the fact that there are all these things that make you different. Alright guys, this is the end of the video. I hope that this video has inspired you to just book that ticket and go. I hope you guys go out there, you're strong, you're courageous, and you're driven and motivated and dedicated to go out there. Let me know if you guys have any other helpful tips in the comments down below and give this video a huge thumbs up if you found this helpful in any way shape or form i will see you guys in the very next video and ciao